Hi guys, I am L Benet. I am an ICF certified emotional intelligence coach here with the lovely Grace Fraga, certified relationship coach. And welcome to I Heart My Narc with a Broken Heart. I know. And it's a sad looking heart. Look at this. I know. Crack. <laughs> we need to practice that one. <laughs> So exactly. we're excited because we are here for a year-long podcast to talk about narcissistic relationships mm -hmm. and how to look out for them, tips in supporting you. Grace, why did we even start this to begin with? Ah, oh, there's so much okay. to talk about. So the first thing we're going to do, Al, is we are going to help our audience spot a narcissist. So how to spot a nar narcissist 101 right here. Let's so number it. one, yes. So they are very charming at first, right? So you will not be able to spot them in the beginning because they're going to try to lure you into their world by being super ultra charming where in a relationship they will sweep you off your feet right so true so true and to add even before you go no further it's like whoa, whoa, whoa well i can spot a narc now because i had this special bracelet and it like vibrates when i get near someone who, i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh we'd be rich <laughs> but the real the real way to spot a narc is just like you're saying is they have the ability to just blend into a lot of your and have a conversation with you on a lot of the lights that you you're into a lot of your hobbies mm -hmm. or like ooh, they happen to like them as well yeah and so they are able to hold these conversations and and you're like oh my gosh i would have never thought i met somebody that you know loves painting loves basketball everything that i love they yeah. have the ability to just blend and flow. Absolutely. Yes, of course. They want to find those things that you have in common, those interests you have in common. And sometimes they fake uh, some interests that you could have in common. Yes. So that they can lure you. They want you 100%. So once you trust them, that's when they hit, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, this part is very important. They're going to be very charming. Now, that this doesn't mean that every charming person is going to be a narcissist. Correct. So, oh my gosh, they're very charming, right? Yes, well, yeah. and exactly. <laughs> That's not going to be the issue. Um, okay, so uh, it starts kind of, to be honest, I think it starts kind of like a fairy tale for me. I don't know about you, Elle, but it started very much like a fairy tale. He was a known actor and it was like, oh my gosh, he's the, doing the same things I'm doing. He was also a comedian and an actor and and uh, he lured me with his career uh, almost as if, you know, if you're with me, then you're going to be successful. So that mm -hmm. was a very tempting thing. And it was a very smart thing on his end, mm -hmm. thickly smart. But, uh, you know, but we did have stuff in common. That was real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he, he had a very easy access on how to play um, off of those commonalities. I will say, and just stop me if it's too early or not, is how long was he able to keep that up? Because that's my whole thing too. I noticed in my relationship, it was only for a certain stint of time yeah. that they're able to keep that characteristic up. And is it the same experience with you? Uh, yeah, they keep it up until they can't do it anymore or until they think that they got you. Once they think they got you, then that's when their behavior starts just going whack, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When they start showing their true colors. Um, I remember very distinctly when my narc changed, it was 180 degrees from like, oh, I love you and you're the love of my life and you're amazing and we have all this. And then whew, he just, I said something and it triggered him and boom, he just switched on me. And unfortunately we had moved in together. Like it was two weeks into it, into moving in yeah. together. So I was like, oh my God, I had a panic attack. I'm like, I messed up. This is not good. But you know, you try to keep, working on it right because you don't yeah. know what's happening to you yeah How did that happened for you when was the switch well the switch was about i would say seven eight months in and i love this because 
that we're speaking on this. One, guys, just a reminder that this is about empowering you. It's not about knocking anyone because mental disorder, mental health is a big factor. And so is ensuring the well-being of the person that's in that relationship, which is you. So that's why we're here. And I love Grace's background as a single woman having gone through it. Yeah. And my background as a mother, single mother with two children. So we do bring an extensive amount of experience together. Definitely. In, in support of you. And to answer your question, Grace, yes, six, seven, eight months, you know, they just can't keep up with it. And in between that time, you see the signs, but you write them off. Right? Yeah, you see yeah. Things, but you yeah. write them off. I know. Listen, I was even scared. He had knives in his house. And that, for some reason, that scared me. I never, a lot of people have knives in their, uh, in their, um, you know, house. And he had like a collection of knives or something, like he collected knives. And something told me like, oh, in my stomach, you know, when you feel that, and that's, that's a great way to, um, to spot something that's not right in general. You listen to your gut, if your Ooh, gut yes. you know, right? Biggest thing, biggest okay. thing. Biggest. And as we get older, we learn how to trust our instincts, which are spot on. They have never failed me ever. They're always spot on. So that's another thing for our viewers. Like if you feel something is not right, even though they like flatter you and they treat you so well and they say you're awesome. And just, if you have that gut feeling, just listen to it because something is not right. Something's a little off. I love the term, you mentioned this term, toxic. What, earlier, oh, yeah. it was so okay. perfect. Yeah, because it's called toxic positivity. So <laughs> whenever <laughs> your narc is like misbehaving, so to speak, you excuse the person like, oh, maybe they're angry. Maybe they're having a bad day or and it's like, no, this guy is always angry. This woman is always angry. It's like something is really wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and they take it out on you, they lash out on you. That's mm -hmm. another thing when the turning point, that's what happens. They lash out on you and it's not uh, the cause of whatever triggers that switch is not proportionate to their reaction, which is completely whack. And mine was an actor, so you can imagine the drama. Yes. Oh my God. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And that brings to question or to another point is, well, why do you stay if you're getting treated that way? Well, the thing is, one, at some point you get locked in yeah. and when you had that moment where they're lashing out at you, they're so good at making up and making you feel better. And that's the cycle that's very challenging to discern when to sever it. Absolutely. Another sign, let me tell you, is in the beginning, right? Because we're talking like how charming they are. Mm -hmm. uh, part of the being charming is they will move things forward really quickly without knowing you that well. Mm. So they want to close the deal. It's like I use car salesman. It's like, okay, I'm treating you nice. I give you coffee and donuts. Now buy my car. <laughs> right, right, right. So it's kind of like a sales job, I think. And mm -hmm. uh, that's why whenever somebody uh, pushes you to do mm -hmm. something too quickly, be be careful. Uh, mm -hmm. Grab your antenna. Go, ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they sound like that, my antenna. But <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay, good. I'm glad. <laughs> and, and, but it's so true. It's so true. And guys, it's not like you're not worth it. You are. You're worth people rushing in for you. But you're also worth it. You're worth that weight. Exactly. As well, you know. Yeah. And just staying in and stepping into, we had this talk yesterday, um, just knowing you're a king. You're a queen. Yes. That's right. Where's my crown? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. So exactly that. Um, and I know for myself, it was a lot of having to step into my queenness. Yes. You know? I and love it. Stepping into my queenness. So this is good. This is good. So yeah. um, that's the one sign to look out for. Definitely. Um, this is the second sign. Okay. Mm -hmm. And be wary of this they hog the conversation talking about how great they are 
Now, granted, on a first date, sometimes pe sometimes people are nervous and they talk and talk and talk. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about on a regular basis. It's like they they hog the conversation. Oh, look how great I am, and 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 their mm -hmm. problems and uh, delusions of grandeur and, and all these things. So my narc was like that. He was an actor, so he would talk about his stuff constantly. Mm. That's just being an actor, but like he was extra on that. Mm -hmm, but I did mm -hmm. this and I did that, and this is who I am, entitled and, and all this stuff. So, uh, yeah, they talk about themselves a lot. Um, and they kind of feel like, did you get your point into, like, if you were in the conversation and he asked a little bit about you, did mm -hmm. it start about you? And then they had a way of turning it back to themselves? That's of how course. Okay. And it's just work. Yeah, this relates to a movie I did. This relates to a series I did. <laughs> I remember yes. when. Yes, yes. And also in group conversations, like it would socially, mm -hmm. it was, you know, he would be like, this is my girlfriend and no, no, no. And then me, 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 you know, and I do this because it's like a puppet, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh, look at me. Uh, and I would be like, you had a flashlight, you know, like a spiritual flashlight. I would shine it on him. Like, okay, <laughs> fine, go ahead. Here's the lighting I'm giving you just a flashlight. Oh, wow. Well, then, I, I I feel it's like it can be subtle too. Like you don't realize it at first, but over a time, it's like, what? How did this? I was talking about apples, and it somehow got back about you. Always, <laughs> always. Hmm. Yeah, but you know, some people are like that. They're egotistical, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Again, like there is a spectrum of narcissism, right? There's the selfie narcissism, which is the lowest form. Mm -hmm. And then there's the narcissistic abuse extreme, right? Which yeah. is sociopathic, in my opinion. I'm not a, a psychologist, but that's what I think. It's been from observations. It's sociopathic, really. Mm -hmm. they, uh, even though they do fake, that's another thing. Be careful because they do fake emotions. They're really good actors. Mm. Yeah, So true. So, so true. Now, another thing is, Al, uh, people are, you know, we were talking about this, like people say, you know, I know my value. What is the difference between knowing your value and a narc brag, what I call it? Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what is the difference? You really helped clear that up when we had this conversation. And it's just like, you know, that's so true. Like knowing your values to, to myself is having boundaries. And I had none. I had no boundaries. And I will be feeling that I'm doing something to help him. I see his potential. I see. And so, but if you had a boundary, you understand that there has to be some limit because at some point you helping this person is exhausting yourself. Yeah. You're exhausting you so much. I had ended up in the emergency room. So. Oh my God. Who are you helping? <sighs> So the boundary thing is essence. And that to me is knowing you have to know your worth. You have to know your worth. Bravo. Yes, absolutely. And also with people who are not narcs that, you know, they can lash out on you or whatever. You need to set boundaries. Like, look, this behavior is unacceptable. I will not tolerate this. I don't deserve this. So I think as victims of narcissistic abuse, we're way more sensitive to, but at the same time, it's good because we do set boundaries now because we know better mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not to let them invade us because it's almost like i felt like it was an invasion into my being and they they just like he just stayed in my spirit for a long time uh it's a very toxic thing it's a very codependent thing that happens between the narc and their victim did you experience that too the same but i i'm i'm trying not to laugh what? <laughs> You're like, cause now I set boundaries. I'm like, um, Grace, you don't even entertain them because the last time right. you were saying you saw one indication and you were like, uh, uh, I'm out. Girl, three times in five days, I was uh, get out of my house. <laughs> I love that about you. And that's where you, you end up getting is when you yeah. see one sign, you don't question. I'm not sitting here to see if you are, if you're not, Goodbye. Totally. This this was a, an ex boyfriend and my first husband, who is we're friends forever, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I I talked to him for two hours because I was like, oh my god, I think it's happening. And he's been through it too with mm -hmm. a girlfriend. 
Uh, so he, this is what sold me. He said, Grace, this is not going to get any better. Mm. He's been there for like three days and he's already exhibiting that behavior. It's going to get worse. Ooh. So, I like that. I like that. And the fact that you didn't try to justify anything for him in your mind. Right. Right. And talking to somebody that I trust and I love like him, mm -hmm. uh, like my ex-husband, uh, in, in respect, I respect his opinion very much. Mm -hmm. And because he's been, you know how we all help each other. He's also a victim of narcissistic abuse mm. with one of his girlfriends. So it was good that we were helping each other. So that's another thing we need to help each other. And this is what we're doing now, right? We're helping ourselves and others. Um, I love that. And one more thing before we actually switch on to the next thing is with that, <laughs> reach out to grace reach out to myself because often it can feel a little embarrassing especially trying to tell a friend someone that's close and knows you're you know you might feel judged you might feel some type of way mm -hmm. but if it's helpful to talk to someone that doesn't actually know you personally then do that this is exactly why we created this platform just yeah. for you Absolutely. And of course, feel free to leave comments or to contact us, DM us. You know, we also do coaching. Mm -hmm. um, and so we are, we would love to help you. And we've been through it all. Believe me, we, we can definitely help you. Um, oh. <laughs> all of it. Oh my God. So here, let me tell you some really good pointers about and that I have it here on my document because we have a document. Yes. <laughs> We sure do. We're like, we're not missing anything. You're going to see us looking at our screens because there's so many elements that totally. we wanted to relay to you guys that we have it right up in front. Absolutely. And this is like really good pointers on how to spot a narc. It says, ask yourself, what happens when you do talk about yourself? Hmm. Do they ask follow-up questions and express interest to learn more about you? Follow-up questions. Mm-hmm. Or do they make it all about them? Mm. Those are really good questions. Those are really good questions. Those mm -hmm. are. And again, just some things to be mindful and to be true to yourself. True to yourself. Like just answer, just answer. Don't sugarcoat. Don't sugarcoat. It no. is what it is and it's okay, but it just yeah. is what it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it gets better. You know, the first time I grew up with narcissistic, a narcissistic abuser, obviously. Uh, but the first narcissist, my first narc that I'm aware of, uh, that was a long term relationship. It took me three years to get out. Mm, wow. This last one that I spotted his behavior really quickly. It lasted five days. So that tells you that it's it gets better. We get better spotting it it's like we yeah. don't think it yes it does it really does it really does and i feel like kudos to the person that is actually going through it i feel you aren't giving more than you can bear and what is it, like diamonds they're built under pressure yes that's what you are you're going to get through it and come out even more powerful and beautiful than you were when you went into it I love it. Yeah, even though it feels like when you're in that situation, like, oh my God, I'm never going to get out of this. I can't yeah. get out. I felt like I couldn't get out. And sure, yeah. you do the same. You know, we all do. There's hope. There's hope, and you can get out. You, you will. You have to get out. Yes. If you want to stay alive because yes. they will get you sick. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. and, that's, the, and that's the thing. And I'm just like, get, 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 get. but it is because sometimes we don't put too much um acknowledgement into this the the importance of it because we're like it's not physical well it doesn't have to be physical emotional um trauma is just as hurtful and harmful oh my god physical. absolutely yeah yeah the physical part it's awful yes you have to consider that sometimes they don't abuse you physically but they do emotionally and psychologically yes and it's just as bad and and so when they do it physically they do all three of them because it all goes together yes um yeah so uh, that's a great point um so let's 
cover the third way that you can spot a narcissist. Mm -hmm. uh, they feed off your compliments. Mm, 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 mm. Say it again. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> they feed off your compliments. Yes. Yeah. Like giving them a a a rise. Um Say more on that before I just start yammering my mouth again. Say more. No, go for it. Go for it. Okay, one more time. They feed off your compliments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They are users. They use you to boost their self-esteem, which oddly enough, their self-esteem and their uh, level of insecurity is like, wow, low self-esteem and high level of insecurity. Well, you wouldn't think that, you know, because they enjoy um being out in public it yeah. seems it seems and enjoy the spotlight so much so you would think that it's the essence of someone that is um confident yeah but in reality it's insecurity very much insecurity. So. Yeah. yeah absolutely uh it's if you supply their sense of if you feed their sense of self-worth it makes them feel powerful so mm -hmm. it, it's a double-edged sword. It's like, yes, you want to, you know, build up the person you're with. But in this case, when they're a narc, they use that against you in the long run, right? Because mm -hmm. it makes them feel powerful. Mm -hmm. And so like more encouraged to abuse you, mm -hmm. I feel. Uh, they also use empathetic people like us. They do because we excuse them constantly. Mm -hmm we uh, we actually also build them up, right? Mm -hmm. So they, they use highly empathetic people to compliment them, mm -hmm. to build their self-worth, so then they can actually abuse you even better because they feel more powerful. Yes, yes. These are really, really good, really good, really direct, really thought-provoking, and it's a really nice grounding um, place to begin yeah the question and ask yourself well i'm starting to see these these are okay okay yeah right mm -hmm. so, hmm, check uh, so this is actually a great tip it's a people reading tip okay folks who are actually self-confidence won't solely rely on you or anyone else to feel good about themselves hmm i like that mm -hmm. i like it's that the main difference between folks who are confident and those with NPD is that narcissists need others to lift them up and lift themselves up only by putting others down. Wow. And I can definitely reflection, you know, hindsight 2020, but being outside of it now, you can definitely uh, see that. I know when I was in the hospital, that's when it really started clicking for me is mm -hmm. laying in hospital, not being able to, uh, practically mobilized but that person was so happy like happy to help now and i was like what this is you know just happy to do things and you know you're the most the best person ever the most beautiful and i was like that is so interesting the best treatment i got was when i was in the hospital and i was really really down the longest you know that i've been treated like a queen yeah yeah. When you're when you're enter into your power, they hate that. When yes. you yeah, they don't want you powerful. They want you weak. Yes, and that's when the lights were really going off for me. And I feel every experience is a good experience. You might say, "Oh gosh, you end up in the hospital." Sometimes it takes that to see the light. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's so sad. Um, I you went to the hospital. I I didn't go to the hospital, but. Um, I had in six months, nine relapses of bronchitis. Oh my God. Yeah. What happens is, what happened to both of us is our immune system are so um, busy fighting that emotional turmoil because your immune system responds to emotions too. This is was explained to me by a doctor. Okay. But it's so busy with that issue that you're having, emotional issue, that it doesn't have time or capacity to fight uh, bacteria and viruses or anything. So you get sick more often than when you're not with a narcissist. Oh, no, I did not. That's new to me. Oh, wow. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I asked my doctor. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, it was. I thought that was very interesting. So think about that again. That's another sign. If you're, we also want to know signs on the victims' end, right? Like if you start getting sick a lot, ding 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 ding. ding okay, because okay? that's not normal. Okay, well that was that was new new to me. That was new to me. Yeah. Wow. Um, so we're gonna close on this. Um, for this particular one, ask yourself: Are they putting me down? making me feel worthless by lessening my value. Again, if you know your value, they cannot lessen your value. Mm. Ta-da! Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> Beautiful. And this, I, I love this, because it's so representative of narcs. As Weiler explains it, which is the lady that we quoted earlier, narcissists punish everyone around them for their lack of self-confidence. Genius. Extreme. Yeah, that, that defines the whole victim narc relationship. Perfect. Yeah, they punish you for no reason. For no reason at all. Just the fact that you exist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're right at um, the half hour almost. So we yes. um, thank you everybody for tuning in. We're going to do this, like we said earlier, once a month. And we definitely want your feedback. We want you to tell us what you want to hear, what topics you'd like to hear. Uh, if you have any questions, DM us or comment. If it's a personal thing, you can please DM us. Mm -hmm. We are definitely uh, available for coaching, both of us. And you can buy our books. Um, my book is called Love at First X, and it's about breakups and the aftermath. And your book, Elle? My book is They Made Me Do It, and it's a reflection of my childhood being raised in a cult and just going through these type of relationships and supporting you where you are. Absolutely. The other thing, Grace, is even though we're doing this on a monthly basis, you have us for all of 2021, we are going to be doing on Saturdays tips of the week. Another exciting thing that we can yeah. connect with you on while you're waiting for the next podcast to air. I love it. Yes. Thank you for pointing that out. And we're also going to post you know, memes, all kinds of things to help you. Okay. Yes. Yes. So thank you guys for subscribing to our channel, the Patreon channel, and we will see you on episode two. Yes. See you guys next month. Bye.